Hey everybody, it's Norm from Testing. I'm here at the RPF party. That's the Replica Prop Forum. It's part of the gathering of prop makers, including Dave Goldberg here. Dave, we met a while ago online. We did. You were working on like the Blade Runner blaster. You helped with one of the uh, the barrels. Uh, yeah, I made uh, metal blaster, metal barrels to go on the Tominasuki blaster. That's right. Uh, and it's great to see you here at the party, and you have some projects that you've brought. Yeah. Now, you've been model making for years now. Uh, 35 years now, yeah. Wow, and so you've seen all the process. I'm obviously a big fan of things like Star Wars, building model kits, and you love building things like based on the original studio yeah. scale models. Yeah, uh, I, I worked for years and years building studio scale models. We didn't never call it studio scale, but building models for the movies. I never got to work on Star Wars, unfortunately. Um, so now I'm kind of reliving that dream and building Star Wars studio scale models as a hobby. Now when a lot of people think of studio scale, they think, okay, these are the miniatures that were used for filming. Some of them, like you may have seen on tour, with the Star Wars tours, were hero props. You've seen the giant five foot Millennium Falcon, but there are a lot of miniatures that maybe didn't get, that aren't the hero props that are still cool as a model builder like this guy here. Can you explain what this is? Um, this is the uh, X-Wing fighter. This is actually, um, this is not an original from the movie by any means, but it is, uh, the castings for this model are from the original castings. But not uh, a hero it's, one, it's, a... It's a pyro model. A pyro so they model. built two different types of models. They built the hero model that was Luke's X-Wing and several of the other X-Wings, and they had the motorized wings, mm -hmm. and they were designed for close-up, but they had to blow up a bunch of them. Yeah. And so they did, a, they, they did another one. It was a different mold, very similar. Um, it had some slight different details on it. Uh, and then from that mold, they cast up uh, parts out of uh, a skinned foam. It was very fragile. And they would make an X-Wing out of that and then blow it up into little pieces. And from those molds, an original set of rigid castings was made and squirreled away in the model shop up on the top shelf. And Grant McCune found those castings in the early 80s. And uh, he assembled them into a model that was in his office for years and years. But before he did that, they made a mold off of them and started making castings. And these castings were, for the most part, traded. I ended up trading a set of castings of from um, the Abyss that I had worked on for a set of castings from this X-Wing. So it's a, there's definitely a pedigree there. There's a pedigree. This is what would be called a second generation casting. It can be traced back to the original. Um, a lot of the details you can see are the same as the original. Mm -hmm. And I had these castings for many, many years. And finally, about a year ago, I decided I might as well put them together. Yeah. So I put them together, detailed it out, painted it, and. Uh, wound up with my own studio scale X-Wing fighter. Now you said the original pyro model was made out of foam, yeah. and yours is not foam, it's cast uh, in whatever the cast is, is it a resin? It's a, it's a rigid resin. Rigid yes. resin, yeah. so you're not precious about recreating it with the exact same materials or the exact same process. What is it about the model making process that excites you? Um, what excites me is having the, well, I love the process, all different methods of doing it, but I also like the final piece. And if a methodology is different used to create the final piece than the original, that's fine. If it looks like what it's supposed to look like, even if it's not 100%, I mean, there are people who will get in and you know say, oh, well, that panel line, that should be a quarter of an inch long. Right. It looks like it's an eighth of an inch long. I don't care about that. That's a little bit too anal retentive for me. <laughs> and I'm pretty anal retentive. Um, I just love that it looks like the like the original does, um, and it may or may not use the same materials as the original. Now you're working on a lot of projects at the same time, and your most recent one is one we have here, which is it's a Y wing. It's a now, Y wing. Is it also based on like the pyro model? Um, yes and no. It's not as clear cut which were the pyros and which weren't uh, for the originals. Most of the photo reference that's available of the Y-Wing is of remaining existent hero, hero models. Mm. The photos that I've used for the most part are of a hero Y-Wing that uh, was given by George Lucas to Alan Ladd, then president of Fox, and he's the one that basically greenlit Star Wars. Right. So as appreciation, he gave Alan Ladd 
uh, a Y-Wing model. That model um, later wound up uh, from his estate going on auction or being offered to Prop Store of London. The owner of Prop Store said, I'm not going to sell this, I'm going to keep this for my yeah. private collection. So he basically bought it, kept it for his private collection. He shot some really, really good photographs of it, very high, well lit, high resolution, in focus, which is difficult to find in focus. Mm -hmm. And I've used those photos primarily as the reference for creating this model. So it's a replica of a very specific artifact in yes. Star Wars history. Yes. Now, well, yes and no. It is, I use that as the basis for it. But again, I'm calling this the Green Leader Project. Green Leader was not from any, so I'm giving myself a little bit of creative license to change things up based on parts that I can't find or if I want to do something a little different. Um, I, when I look at the, at the Y-Wing, I think the detailing they did on the bottom is gorgeous. The detailing on the top, I'm not so wild about. So I'm giving myself a little bit of freedom to change things up a little bit. I look at this model, which is in progress, and I see a lot of different types of materials. You got what looks like here, laser cut acrylic, looks like you have some 3D printed parts. What is your build, design and build process for this? Uh, my design process for, for these models, I design it in the computer first. That's just the way I work now. Um, and I model it up in the computer, and once I've got that model, I can decide the best way to make it. The original was built up out of styrene parts to build a box. They glued kit parts to it, they did a mold. What I'm doing is I modeled it up and decided to 3D print a, a, a lot of it. Yeah. Um, I'm using basically the technology that I know if they'd had available to them back then, they would definitely they would have be doing it. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the parts here, it is laser cut acrylic for the main spar for the wing, and there's some aluminum parts for the armature, um, and then a lot of 3D printed parts. Your domes, I see some 3D printed test prints, which yeah. look beautiful. Uh, how do the pieces come together? Like, I see this 3D printed piece, and you designed it, so the seams are off on the side here. Yeah. Uh, this was the first round of, of 3D printing. This was sort of a test print just for NASA. Um, so this was, I knew I wanted to mold and cast these shells um, for a couple of reasons. One, the 3D prints are not archival in spite yep. of what anybody will say, um, where the resin is much better. And also, I want to make more than one of these. You're making kits. I'm ma I am, You're designing I'm these to be kits. as... I'm making parts so that other people can get some of these parts. Right. I am definitely not doing a full kit. One of the things that I haven't mentioned about this, this is an open source project. Oh. I've All of the files for these parts, I've posted online. So for people that want to make their own Y-Wing fighter, and there's 30 or 40 people now are in the process of doing it, they can download my files, 3D print these parts, and, uh, and use them to assemble their own Y-Wing. Um, and it's, it's great because it's, it's not, definitely not a kit. It requires a lot of sort of hands-on, do-it-yourself still, a lot of detailing. But it is kind of a step in that, you know, helping. It gets over an initial hurdle. The Y-Wing in particular is a very difficult model to kind of figure out from scratch. So this kind of gives you a bones to work on. Mm. Um, but these are, this was the first round of 3D printed parts I, I had done for the, the forward fuselage. Uh, and they fit together, but also they're designed with internal ribbing and structure that attaches to the armature. They're keyed to go together uh, there. But when I got these, I, I really wasn't completely happy with them. I wasn't happy with the seam on the side. Um, I wasn't really happy with the degree of surface finish that it had. So I ended up uh, instead having them reprinted. And redesigned a little bit. I redesigned them. Wow, these pieces look so nice. And I had these printed by a company in Hong Kong. I redesigned them so you can see now the seam line is it's on the bottom. bottom. Nice. So it's much easier to clean. You don't have this big seam on the side. Um, it still has all sorts of internal rib structure for support. Uh, but these parts I had printed at a company in Hong Kong. They do a lot of printing for sh um, uh, toy, manufacturers. toy manufacturers for Hot Toy and, yep. and um, uh, Sideshow and yep. Disney collectibles. And so they're really into doing just gorgeous parts. So I had these printed there and I just got them this week. I'm very excited about it. And I'll be getting these into rubber 
the next couple of weeks and, and start molding and casting them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, David, for sharing with us your projects. You can follow David's projects on the RFP app. He also has posted some stuff on Tested as well. So good to see you in person. Pleasure. Thanks for coming down. And we'll see you next time. More stuff from the RPF Party 2016. I'm Norm. Bye.